Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm your host, Jay Fidel. And I'm your co-host, Duko Ishii. In our show this time, we'll cover the Hawaii Health Information Exchange and how it can change healthcare in Hawaii. We'll talk with some of the people who are putting it together, both administrators and doctors. It's very high tech. The Hawaii Health Information Exchange allows doctors to securely pool patient records and medical information. This allows easier and more immediate access to that information by all the doctors treating a given patient, and it's therefore likely to improve medical care for that patient and for all of us. But this adventure is just beginning, and there's a long way to go before all the doctors in Hawaii are on board and the system reaches critical mass. To get a handle on what's going on, we spoke with the three administrators who are building the program. Christine Maie Sakuda, Executive Director, Greg Suinaga, State Project Director, and Jeff Liu, Hawaii Pacific Regional Extension Center Project Director. As you will see, they are all very dedicated and committed to getting the job done. Hawaii has had, it has ebbed and flowed in, in health information technology initiatives. I mean, we're in the middle of the Pacific, we're, we're an island state, and you would think that we would have leveraged technology in a very meaningful way to, to advance, you know, our, our healthcare system. But then you also kind of have your traditional, you, you know, your, 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 your traditional characteristics of healthcare as is in the United States across, and, you know, across the country with everyone kind of does their own thing. You know, and you, you practice, uh, you, you get your degree, and no one tells you how to run a business when you do that. You set up your own, your own office, your own practice, and, you know, you, you do what's best. And so that's, that's sort of the way we've been moving along. And, you know, in the process of doing that, healthcare costs have, have increased um, at an unsustainable rate and, and, you know, to the point where it's not really becoming problematic and drastic change needs to happen. And so there's a lot of, of chaos and flux in the, in the healthcare industry right now. It is exciting. And I think people inherently believe that things need to change um, uh, on many, many different levels and, and the perspectives of many different, different um, participants within the healthcare system to include the, the patients. You know, so patients traditionally are sort of led through the healthcare system, you know, especially if someone who's a, a high utilizer and doesn't understand all of the, the healthcare jargon and they, they entrust you know, the, the advice given by the provider. And, and you know, when you get a, a group of them giving you different advice differently, you, you kind of really experience maybe the diversity within the, within the healthcare system. But patients like um, the personalization of healthcare. So it really is, we're really in an interesting place where Hawaii is populated by small independent mom and pop physicians. Some of them have electronic health records. Right now, I, I think we can still safely say most of those independent physicians don't have electronic health records, and yet these demands are being impressed upon them by, by the, the larger forces to, to el electronicize their, their office, to be able to share information so informed decisions can be made. Um, so I think that, you know, you do see now a uh, relationship building that exists between hospitals and the, the physicians out in the community that they associate closely with and as a team, how can they really address the, the, the patient's care? And I think that, you know, more and more communities like that or neighborhoods like that or teams like that are, are really going to proliferate. And, and, you know, there's something to be said for the, the, the care coordination team that does need to exist to manage, a, a, you know, a patient's health care. And technology is very, very critical, you know, related to that. In, in Hawaii, there are about, you know, 30 different electronic health care record systems um, that, that exist. And Hawaii, like most other states, has a concentrated amount of, you know, the top five in Hawaii are more or less the same kind of top five in, in every other state. But still, Everybody has their own electronic health care record system, and they need to communicate with each other for the benefit of the patient. I'm Greg Suinaga. I'm with the Hawaii Health Information Exchange. I'm the um, project director for the state HIE. Um, I run the program uh, 
for uh, our federal grantee uh, through a cooperative agreement. Prior, to, I've been with the Hawaii HIE for about two and a half years, and prior to that, I was uh, with uh, Tripler Army Medical Center, uh, assisting them as a consultant, uh, working on uh, claims adjudication with Tripler Army Medical Center. Uh, prior to that, I was with a company called um, Mele Associates, and we were implementing electronic health record systems in uh, physician offices. And uh, that was a spin off of uh, a tech transfer initiative with the Pacific Telehealth and Technology, HUI. Um, that is also a joint venture uh, organization with Tripler, Army Medical Center, and the VA here in the Pacific. My degree is in uh, film and television, and when I moved back to Hawaii, there wasn't a big industry for that here. So uh, I was working with uh, the Ohana Foundation, which converted a lot of DVDs to educational material. And using that background, um, I moved into um, technology-based uh, projects, and one of that was the telemedicine initiative uh, at Tripler Army Medical Center. There's a lot of project management that is involved in film and television. You have to know budgeting, schedule, and um, uh, organization. So I used a lot of those skills that I learned in college um, and used that for uh, the technology field that I'm into today. There's a creative side that I do miss, but um, uh, the work that I'm doing right now is, is creative. You have to think on your feet. You have to come up with innovative ways to um, resolve problems. Health Information Exchange is an initiative that was started um, about 10 years ago actually and the idea of moving uh, patient records from one uh, siloed organization to another was um, unheard of at that time because of privacy issues that physicians are concerned about as well as the general public. Um, through a lot of the um, credit card uh, scams and um, uh, news regarding the VA, regarding um, losing patient records, a lot of those initiatives were pushed back. But um, through HIPAA and High Tech Initiative, which is the um, health information initiative that um, George W. Bush initiated, that um, every physician was going to have an electronic health record um, application. And the goal for that was to um, um, create electronic records for patients very similar to what the credit card industry has done regarding ATMs, whereas a patient could go anywhere in the country and receive their, um, receive their patient information and provide it to another provider so that they wouldn't go through a lot of those redundant tests. Um, it would also save on um, allergies uh, for medications, as well as reducing the amount of um, lab tests that were done recently on the patient. So it helped both the patient, the provider, and the payer. My name is Jeffrey Liu. I'm the project director for the Regional Extension Center, which is a program uh, in the Hawaii Health Information Exchange Organization. Uh, we, you know, as, as with the uh, Hawaii Health Information Exchange or the exchange program, uh, we are uh, funded by the Office of the National Coordinator. We are one of 62 uh, regional extension centers in the country which uh, uh, have been funded to enable uh, primary care providers in all of the states and also in the Pacific. Uh, to implement uh, electronic health records and systems and also to uh, meet the meet what's called the meaningful use uh, uh, criteria which essentially is to facilitate the use of information to improve health outcomes uh, for patients. The Extension Center is primarily a technical assistance center. Uh, it provides consultations to, to providers. Uh, uh, again, the target uh, among the range of different healthcare professionals uh, out there in the community, uh, it, uh, the Office of national coordinators uh, emphasize the need to include what we call primary care providers, your internists, your family doctors primarily uh, to 
uh, enable them to adopt uh, electronic health information systems uh, in their practices and to use them, again, the terminology is mean in a meaningful use way uh, so that uh, in terms of, you know, collecting information, important information on the demographics, vital signs, uh, being able to uh, uh, collect results from lab radiology to 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 transmit information to other providers that the primary care which is the in the model of, of, of you know future health care is the major coordinator of care uh, for for families and individuals uh, that it provides them with that capability to do it uh, uh, using advanced platforms electronic tech uh, technologies the parent organization of the Regional Extension Center is the Hawaii Health Information Exchange. Uh, so within the Hawaii Health Information Exchange, there are the two pro programs, the HIE, the Health Information Exchange, and the REC, the Regional Extension Center. So we, uh, uh, Hawaii was fortunate. It, there's different sort of allocations across the country, but Hawaii was fortunate to win grants uh, for the uh, Regional Extension Center, HIE, and both of those were won by the uh, our parent organization, the Hawaii Health Information Exchange, and we work collaboratively in terms of supporting each other's efforts. Uh, I think in terms of the uh, the Extension Center, we because we are sort of front line with our providers in terms of implementation of the electronic health uh, uh, systems that we're able to really both in, encourage facilitate the implementation of the eight, uh, of the technologies but also to facilitate the connection into the uh, information exchange which is an important I think feature. Then we drove out to the Polymomi Medical Center and met with Dr. David Saito, an internist and member of the board of directors of the program to see how he feels about how things are going and what the program can do for his patients and practice. I've been with the Health, Hawaii Health Information Exchange for approximately two years now. I'm a member of the board and there are a few physicians on the board. However, there's not too many independent physician representation which are not associated with any of the big groups. Um, and so they kind of use me as the microphone, I guess, so to speak, for the independent physicians. Um, I've been participating on their governance, technical, uh, I'm going to get started in the legal legislative committees, so I'm fairly active with what they're doing. Um, they just recently started, they're going to be going into two phases, and they started about a year ago in phase one, which is their secure messaging, direct messaging um, program, and what that is, is c doctors are communicating via secured email uh, for referrals, transferring information, and that sort of thing. Um, they're going to have a second phase, which is more of what we, I would call a full-blown HIE, where information is uh, being exchanged between facilities, uh, which I think will dramatically improve the care of how we care for people. I was uh, interested in seeing how the sharing of information would, would work uh, for physicians. Uh, many of us are very concerned about privacy and security and uh, that was one of my main concerns with the Hawaii Health Information Exchange and any health information exchange for that matter. Um, I got into it because I'm also a board member of uh, Hawaii Independent Physician Association which is a group of several hundred physicians and uh, they've been doing some work with the Health Information Exchange and I guess because I was kind of techy then there was a good synergy with that. The technology portion of it I think is important because we're developing it right now and there's a lot of technical aspects of it that, that need to be worked out uh, with anywhere from the big hospitals to the insurance companies to the labs to the independent physicians and you know hopefully we can work as a li liaison for all of that. I believe part of my position is to try and help physicians in adopting this, this technology because I believe it's going to vastly change how we take care of people. 
in terms of exchanging health information, I don't, my uh, personal opinion is that Hawaii is not that good at it, I hate to say. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that things will get better. Uh, one of the problems is that the EHRs, um, I believe Hawaii is at least in, on average, in terms of electronic medical record adoption. Um, however, it's not an easy proposition for physicians to undertake because of you know, the time involved. Uh, th there's a lot of headaches with, with, with um, adopting electronic medical records. Um, so I, there, there's going to be some amount of salesmanship I think we're going to have to do for that. Using computer and database technology to record, store, and access medical records and patient information is a great idea. And we can only wonder why the medical community has not implemented a program like this until now. For now, we can only say we're glad that Christine Sakuda, Greg Suenaga, Jeff Liu, and Dr. David Saito are involved and working on putting things together, since in the end, the state's health information exchange will be a great initiative for medicine in Hawaii and will be of great value to us all. Want to know more and see how the program can work for you? Check out hawaiihie.org. One thing is for sure, you'll be hearing more and more about it as we go forward. And now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. Check out ThinkTech's 4 to 5 p.m. drive time radio series on 760 a.m. for Energy on Wednesday, Asia in Review on Thursday, and ThinkTech Fridays on Friday. We also stream video and audio of all of our shows live on the internet. Visit ThinkTechHawaii.com for our live stream and YouTube links. Raise your awareness on ThinkTech Hawaii. On April 25th, the Hawaii Venture Capital Association and ThinkTech will present a luncheon panel program at the Plaza Club entitled Hawaii's Growing Financial Connections with Asia and How We Can Make Them Grow All the Faster. The program will feature opening remarks by Senator Kalani English, Chair of the Senate Transportation and International Relations Committee, and will be moderated by Financial Manager Varian Allen. You can sign up for these programs on hvca.org. And now, here's Bill Spencer, President of the Hawaii Venture Capital Association, with this week's Spensation. I thought it was appropriate to bring up uh, entrepreneurship in the context of the high school business plan competition, part of career technical education. Uh, they're having their competition this week, and it's not just about business plans and business ideas, but marketing and uh, CAD and a whole host of things that give high school students a chance to get real life experience, uh, not just book learning and not skills like wood shop that aren't really relevant in today's world. Uh, but on a, on a broader note with regards to entrepreneurship, I think it's important to uh, sort of remind folks that, you know, our education system in, in many ways is broken. Uh, the whole focus is uh, preparing yourself to get a better job or get a job in the first place. You know, teaching those basic skills, which are of course important no matter no matter what you do in life. But the, the focus is always, you know, setting the bar higher, uh, making sure you get good grades in high school so you can go on to college and uh, good grades in college so you can pursue a professional career if, if that's your intention. But what about entrepreneurship? You know, I, I think entrepreneurship should be introduced into curriculums as early as elementary school. Kids need to know that they can create their own job. 
that they don't have to rely on um, some employer uh, or, or some educational process to prepare them for a job. I mean, uh, entrepreneurs not only make their own jobs, but they uh, create things that uh, create jobs. And I think that's what's missing in our educational system, and I'd like to see more of it. I think people like our uh, co-host DJ, 10 years old, I mean, why shouldn't he be exposed to entrepreneurship when he's in elementary school and learn that you can build things, sell things, create things, and uh, create your own job along the way? So um, that's something that's important to me. That's why I like to help entrepreneurs. That's why I think entrepreneurs um, are such an important part of our society and why we have to support them and nurture them. So that's my spensation for the week, Jay. Yeah, it's great, Bill, because, uh, you know, it's, it's public service what you do. And uh, it's public service to build the schools. The schools cannot be the way they were when we were going to school because um, the world has changed. It's very complex now, and the country needs entrepreneurs. We aren't so much building a workforce as we're building an entrepreneur force. We're building the next generation of American business right here, and Hawaii business, absolutely essential. And, uh, it's the entrepreneur that creates the jobs, that creates the opportunities for the folks that aren't interested in entrepreneurship. So we've got to have it, and I think we've neglected to build that capacity. Even though some argue that entrepreneurs are born and not raised or educated, uh, that may be true, but at the same time, we, we need to expose our young people to the possibility. Absolutely, Bill. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And here's Panos Prevaduros of the College of Engineering at UH Manoa with a ThinkTech traffic report where he examines Honolulu's traffic congestion one intersection at a time. Well, once upon a time, we were planning to do a major artery through uh, the city of Honolulu. Now, right now, you see over here, this is, of course, Punchbowl Crater and Honolulu Harbor. And uh, the idea came of the major artery. The major artery was to be uh, like a major arterial, like what we have uh, today as Vineyard Boulevard, which is right here, this straight line that you can see on your screen and then here we have H1 freeway coming and going around it uh, in parts as an elevated and then it remerges. Now in the late 50s uh, main artery was supposed to be the major through uh, arterial uh, in our town but then uh, the Interstate Highway Act uh, came up and we had Senator Inouye in uh, Washington that very quickly realized that if we were to upgrade the main artery into an interstate class project, uh, we could get 90% support from the feds. And that's why now that uh, addresses part of the reason why the central part of the H1 freeway is today uh, not a very friendly freeway. It has too many ramps, the acceleration lengths are very short, there is a lot of weaving, there are a lot of uh, contradictory things. In other words, traffic comes in before traffic gets out, like happens over here in the Luna Lilo neighborhood, where the Luna Lilo on-ramp comes from Ala Moana and Makiki before the vineyard twin lane off-ramp comes out, and there is a big mess that we try to regulate in the morning by uh, rerouting traffic from Luna Lilo directly onto Vineyard Boulevard. Now here it is, the situation is messy, and the state has done a good project on the Makiki Viaduct, which is something that we looked uh, with the DOT and the UH uh, starting back in uh, 1998. Eventually, by 2004, we came up with a soft recommendation uh, to provide four lanes instead of three. And then later on, a local firm, RM Towel, and the DOT and myself uh, got together and we did detailed simulation of this segment of how it would work with flyover ramps, which turned out to be very, very expensive and difficult to do, and uh, four narrower lanes. So for several months now, we have four narrower lanes, and the uh, uh, Hawaii DOT did it as a one-year project. At the end of it, it will uh, examine uh, what was the accident record before and after, and they will consider two things. Number one, making it permanent. Number two, perhaps expanding it throughout the H1 to go reach the other side uh, of uh, all the way to Kalihi Street. 
And that was the point uh, that uh, uh, it was part of our solutions because there is another uh, choker, as I call it, over here at Kalihi Street, where the freeway from four lanes drops down to three, and in the afternoon, it's a major bottleneck. Now, another point I want to bring here in this central part of our network is Vineyard Boulevard, uh, which is actually a controlled by the state. It's a state street, but all the traffic lights are run by the city. And there is a bit of disconnect there, and when you travel on Vineyard Boulevard, you can really see the disconnect because you can hardly ever do three traffic lights at a time, although as a parallel major arterial, it should have a little better coordination. So this is a part that uh, the city and the state really need to uh, get together and devise a plan for a more uniform operation of the Vineyard Boulevard as an alternative to the freeway and as a facilitator in roughly the east-west direction. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech, but first we want to thank our underwriters. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Miko on Maui and Hilco on the Big Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company, and CEO of CBI Polymers, a tech company in Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, the state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle & Cook Hawaii, with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, formerly the gas company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Collateral Analytics, a Hawaii-based tech company empowering the real estate industry with greater and faster access to information and the tools they need to make more informed property investment decisions. Okay, Duke, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Duke does. For additional times, check out OC16.TV. Totally, Jay. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech on OC16, visit thinktechhoy.com, be a sponsor or volunteer, and help us reach Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. Aloha, everyone. I'm Duke Oishi. Aloha, everyone. My name is DJ, and ThinkTech is fabulous.